Welcome to Cinema Magic. Today we'll show you a 2013 South Korean comedy drama film titled Miracle in Cell Number 7. The film is about a mentally challenged man wrongfully imprisoned for murder who builds friendships with the hardened criminals in the cell who in return help him see his daughter again by smuggling her into the prison. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. At the movie start, we are introduced to a full-fledged lawyer who tries to defend her father's name. Basically, these two are the main characters in this film, mentally impaired Lee Yong-ga and her lawyer daughter named Ye Sung. Her father was falsely charged with the rape and murder of a young girl. She claims that the prosecutor makes false claims since she was the witness to the whole incident. To convince the judge, she tells the courtroom about her past. Now the film jumps back to 1997, where six-year-old Ye Sung and her mentally disabled father are seen repeating the steps of an animated commercial. Meanwhile, Ye Sung requests her father to get her the remaining Sailor Moon bag from that shop. Young Gu replies to her that once he receives the payment tomorrow, he will definitely purchase the bag. However, another customer buys that last piece of the bag. It appears that the customer is a police commissioner. In a childish way, Young Gu starts requesting the shopkeeper to give them the bag because they have been seeking it for a few weeks. Due to his mental illness, the commissioner misunderstands him and starts beating him. Now we see that Ye Sung is a smart and kind girl. Despite her disappointment of not getting the bag, she doesn't ask about it any further from her father. The following day, the commissioner's daughter, who bought the yellow Sailor Moon backpack, sees Young Gu working in the parking lot. She tells him that she knows another store that sells the same yellow backpack. Young Gu follows the girl to a traditional outdoor market. A short while later, the girl is laying on the ground unconscious and Young Gu is trying to perform CPR. He also pulls down her trouser for good blood circulation. At the same time, a lady walks by and calls the police. It tries to save her but is misunderstood by a witness who reports him of sexually assaulting and killing the girl. Even at the police station, he's still concerned about Ye Sung, who's alone at home. It tries to leave but is beaten by the police and kept until the next day. In the morning, the police make false comments about his actions, noting that he's trying to get revenge on the commissioner by assaulting his girl. To add to his predicament, he's forced to make a false reenactment in exchange for meeting his daughter, which is also a lie told by the police. Hyung Gu is then immediately rushed to the prison and the warden beats him because of his unreal crime. He's detained in cell number 7 along with 5 other inmates. At first met, all of his cellmates hated him for his child rape crime, but they slowly became sympathized with him as he was very friendly and seemed innocent. One day, another prisoner tried to kill his cellmate, but Hyung Gu saved his cellmate from being thrusted by the knife in the stomach. The safe guy was the leader among the rest of the cellmates. The indebted leader asks Lee to make a wish and he will grant it. So Lee asks for his daughter, Hee Sung. When a church event is held, Hee Sung is kidnapped by the inmates and smuggled into the prison to meet her father. Young Gu is overjoyed to meet his daughter and hugs her tightly. He says sorry for leaving her and explains that he's being detained. However, their reunion is cut short because the church event is disbanded. The inmates try to smuggle her out but the church's bus has already left. So Ye Sung starts living in the cell with all of them. During their time in the cell, Ye Sung was so happy to see his father again and stayed close to him all the time. Upon living with them, the inmates realize that Yong Gu is not an assailant since he loves her daughter so much. The inmates try to smuggle her out once more on a religious holiday to avoid punishment. However, they mistook the day and found Buddhist monks instead. One day, Warden receives the photos from the event and discovers one of the girls is missing. He sends his men to examine all the jail chambers to find the little girl. Everyone in cell number 7 was scared that their future would be in danger if they get caught. Despite their best efforts to hide Yi Sung, the daughter is discovered by Warden and brought to the child care center, while Young Gu was prisoned in a separate room alone as punishment. The same night, the prison was burned in a fire caused by a mob prisoner. An angry prisoner burned a part of the prison. That time, the prison warden wanted to capture the mobbing prisoner but the fire was too thick, he couldn't help himself in the fire. Luckily, Young Gu came and saved the trapped prison warden. The warden gets conscious from this coma, and the doctor says that the warden was so lucky that Young Gu helped him last night, risking his own life. Warden looks over to Young Gu, who's lying next to him. The warden seemed so happy and was grateful towards Young Gu. Meanwhile, Ye Sung comes back to her school to attend the classes. Her teacher asks about her problem, and Ye Sung recommends a parent consultation instead so that she can meet her father. In prison, Young Gu is finally united with her daughter once more. Upon realizing that the girl just misses her father so much, she doesn't bother them and lets them talk wholeheartedly. They enjoy their conversation very much, but the visit time's up. 
The next moment, we see that Warden recollects his memories about his only son who was killed by an inmate. Now we see that the Warden reconsidered Yonggu's case as Yonggu doesn't seem to be a criminal. He looks into his crime files and finds that his sworn statement is falsified. Warden was kind-hearted, so he brought Ye Sung to meet and stayed with his father in the cell. During Ye Sung's time with his father in cell, she cheers up the inmates with Sailor Moon singing and dancing, drawing and learning. One by one, the inmates have a special bond with her as they help one another. During an exercise, Hyungu is informed that his final trial is set. The inmates are determined to train him so that he can win the trial and be unified with her daughter once more. They prepared Yonggu for the trial to avoid an imminent death sentence for him, but up against the police commissioner, who was the father of the young girl he was accused of killing, but they all know that it was not an easy task. Knowing the mistreatment, the inmates are more convinced to help him win. They train him to answer trick questions skillfully without hiding the truth. Since Yonggu didn't exactly know what happened at that moment, they had to go through several scenarios in order to get a picture of the incident. They conclude that the girl died slipping from the icy floor and hitting the brick in the hat. Yonggu studies night and day in every situation to make sure he can live with Yisung once more. The inmates also organize a petition from other prisoners to help Lee in his trial. Even though it's problematic due to Yonggu's illness, they're still confident that Lee will win because he has been mistreated. Meanwhile, a lawyer visits Yonggu in prison and threatens him to confess to the killing. The lawyer also abandons the prisoner's petition, saying it won't help. He goes on to say that the police commissioner is a powerful figure who may ruin his daughter's life if he refuses. Meanwhile, the warden meets the commissioner to convince him of Yonggu's innocence. He also asks the commissioner to reinvestigate the case. However, he must obey his superior and agree with the verdict. After a while, Ye Sung, the jail warden, and the prisoners of room number 7 all attend his trial. In the waiting room, the commissioner threatens him to accept his punishment or he will hurt his daughter instead. To protect his daughter, hyung makes the ultimate sacrifice by accepting the murder. The warden tries to convince the judge that hyung is mentally intimidated, but he still sends to death. On December 23rd, hyung is condemned to death, which also happens to be Ye Sung's birthday. While in the prison, the inmates are still determined to save Lee and Ye Sung, so they devise a plan by utilizing the upcoming Christmas event. They plan to make a hot air balloon to let them escape because they believe that the most innocent man in the prison is Yonggu and he needs to be freed in the justice. They work around the clock because his execution is near. During a prison function, Yonggu and his daughter are sent on a hot air balloon and effortlessly try to stop the guards from arresting them. They also request all the other prisoners help to commence the plan. However, a rope is stuck on a barbed wire and their attempt fails. It was a sad moment for all the prisoners and they seem disappointed. But on the other hand, Yonggu and Yi Sung, instead of being sad, use this moment to spend quality time with each other. They use this moment to savor the setting sun together for the last time. Back in the cell, everybody celebrates Yi Sung's birthday, and everyone gives her presents, which makes her so much delighted. We see that Yonggu gives her the Sailor Moon backpack that she has been asking for. However, their joy is cut short when the executor calls Yonggu. Cellmates are devastated, but they hide their tears and lie to Yi Sung that her father is being transported to a different cell. As Yonggu walks past the hall, the other prisoners also feel sad for him. As they are about to separate, father tries to hold his tears in front of her daughter. He hugs her daughter for the last time and walks to his execution. Yi Sung waits for her father's final goodbye, but it doesn't show up because he's devastated by their goodbye. After hearing her daughter calling him, he comes back to hug her wholeheartedly. He pleads with the guards that he doesn't want to be separated from his daughter, but they all are now powerless to help him. Over and over, he says sorry and asks for help from anyone, but the prisoners and guards cannot do anything for them. After a while, it was sad to see that Yonggu had been executed because of all the fake accusations. Now, scene cuts to the present, where adult Yi Sung is adopted by the warden, and she studies hard to be a lawyer and appeals for the case. We see that Yi Sung is requesting records related to her father's murder case, which occurred in 1997. The film ends with Yi Sung seeing her as a child and her father flying away in the balloon as if he's off to a better place in heaven. And that's all about this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to her channel and hit the bell icon to stay up to date with such interesting movie recap videos.